What was your intention on the uh, University of California Irvine campus here today? What's your, what, what was your intention? Yeah, our intention here today was to um, yeah, send forth a very clear message and also send a counter. Uh, it is our understanding that uh, on a regular basis a radical imam comes onto the campus here proclaiming death to America, death to Israel. And because of that, no one seems to stand up, no one seems to say anything. And we felt as though we should come here and uh, have a type of counter protest. We should speak actually to that issue. We should let the Muslim community know uh, that in one sense they're very welcome in America. Uh, they're welcome here to worship, to build mosques. Uh, they are protected under the First Amendment. But this type of activity uh, on a university campus, uh, proclaiming death to America, death to Israel, uh, even the proclaiming of Sharia law instead of our Constitution, uh, this type of action is not welcome in America. And it is something that we feel that Americans need to stand up uh, and speak out against. Uh, we see that there's a tendency in America for political correctness and actually for cowardness. And uh, Stand Up America now is about calling America to, to stand up. And that is why we had decided to come in order to speak to this, uh, yeah, to, 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 this, to this challenge and to this, uh, yeah, to this potential uh, direction that could be very dangerous. Is there something special about the Irvine campus that led you to come here? Uh, actually, just, just that. Uh, just that we know that here there is a very heavy uh, Muslim uh, presence and that that is fine. Uh, what we are against is that radical element and actually it was because of that radical element uh, that drew us here. Uh, that is actually the reason why we went to, uh, to Dearborn. Uh, that is why we went to uh, Washington DC, DC as Anjan Chowdhury was going to come there and proclaim uh, Sharia over America any place that there is a radical element of Islam within America trying to proclaim an anti-American, anti-constitutional uh, way of life uh, we plan on being there uh, to speak out and to speak up against that. Do you advocate the separation of church and state? Um, we, we, we do. We do advocate that uh, to, uh, to a, a certain degree. Um, we, we do feel that uh, Christianity provides a certain moral base uh, for our country. Uh, for example, the Ten Commandments. Uh, they have been removed from our courthouse. In that particular sense, we would not actually be for that. We think the Ten, the Ten Commandments are not only perhaps a religious uh, thing, but they are a lifestyle. They are a way of living. Uh, they are a way of communicating to other people, uh, living in, in harmony. So we definitely think that America should definitely return back to uh, our Christian, what we believe is our Christian roots, and definitely Christian values. Uh, we have seen in America uh, the very devastating uh, decay of America, uh, not only economically, but also morally. And so, if you believe in uh, integrating uh, religion into uh, a civil, is it, or even civic society, is, is, is that through politics, or, or is that just through culture? Oh, I think it can be actually through through both. It can be through politics and it can be also uh, uh, through culture. Uh, I think that we definitely have to have a, a certain standard. That standard we have in America. Uh, we have a separation of church and state to a certain degree. Uh, but what we definitely have is the First Amendment. Uh, and that welcomes all religions and provides for them uh, freedom of speech, uh, freedom of evangelism, and the building of their uh, buildings and institutions. That is the thing that we are wanting to protect. We are wanting to protect the Constitution. Well, but the Constitution provides for the distinction between, between church and state, and I, and I suppose uh, that, that's what you're objecting to in Islam. That, right, that Islam is uh, a, a system of, of politics, of religion? Yes, that, 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 that's definitely true. As long as they stay in what I would classify the religious aspect, in other words, they are teaching their holy book, uh, they are having services, uh, 
they are providing uh, service for the community. Uh, they are doing what is classified as religious aspects uh, or religious activities. Yeah, th then of course they are welcome here. Uh, but when they try to institute uh, what Islam has, Sharia, and they desire to institute a type of governmental authority, uh, change or alter our constitution, or even beyond that, they expect uh, they expect special privileges. They expect that the Muslim community should be judged by Sharia and that the American community should be judged by the Constitution. That we are definitely against. Uh, that cannot happen. Uh, that cannot exist. And a country cannot survive under two sets of uh, rules and regulations. What, what exactly was the message you think that the campus was so challenged by? The, camp, the message that they didn't want to have you present? Yeah, I, I think America in general has taken the uh, cowardly road. Uh, we have taken the politically correct road. Uh, we have taken the, the, the easy road. I think that the university was afraid of conflict. And they have done what uh, America does now. Instead of protecting our constitutional rights, uh, we send a very negative message. Instead of protecting our constitutional rights and saying, yes, come onto the campus, we will protect you. Uh, First Amendment, freedom of speech, go ahead and do it. Instead of doing that, what we did was back down. What we did was send the message that if someone will yell loud enough, if they will threaten us, then we will back down. Well, they and I think down. that we you have... You didn't back down. We did not back down. What exactly did you, did you do to, to try and get a permit? Uh, we have, for the last several weeks, uh, tried to get a permit. Uh, we have uh, contacted the university many times. Uh, we tried to uh, fill out all of the papers. We tried to do everything that we had to do. Uh, we were continued to just uh, uh, pushed off. Our emails were not answered. And uh, finally, we saw actually the handwriting on the wall, on the wall that they were not going to uh, give us a permit and they were not going to cooperate with us whatsoever. So we decided uh, instead of trying to pursue their cooperation, we would come and exercise our First Amendment rights uh, to come onto a campus, uh, state a, pub university a public campus. place, a state university campus, come here and exercise our freedom of speech. Yeah. Our message was not one and has never been one of, uh, of violence, but it has always been one of harmony. It has been straight, uh, but uh, the university was very uncooperative. Are there any legal remedies you think you can pursue? That, that I, I, I think there possibly are. We, we have contacted our lawyers in, uh, in, Dearborn, Michi in Ann Arbor, Michigan, uh, the Thomas Moore Law Center, and uh, we will definitely do that. Uh, we did that same thing in Detroit with Dearborn. We were just in Detroit a couple of weeks ago where we won our court case. Uh, we, are now allowed, we are now allowed to go in front of the Islamic Center there in Dearborn and have our protest. And if we have any legal uh, door here at all, we will definitely uh, pursue that. Uh, we will definitely uh, uh, pursue any legal avenue that we have against uh, the university here in Irvine. Mm -hmm. People, people uh, think of you as the Koran burner, as a religious hater, but you're a candidate for the United States uh, presidency. Yes, that's true. It, it, is your motivation racism, or uh, or, or is it uh, a do you have a political goal? Yes, uh, for not, for one thing, Islam is not a race. Uh, Islam is a religion. We tried to make it always very clear. Uh, uh, Muslims are welcome in America. They only need to honor and obey and respect the Constitution of the United States. We have decided to run for president because the candidates that we have, it's very clear that they are not telling the American people the truth. We are in devastating uh, condition. We are $14.9 trillion in debt. I believe our total debt is around $54 uh, trillion. President Obama is an absolute, absolute disaster. Uh, since he has uh, entered into office, everything has went downhill. Unemployment rate has went up. The amount of unemployment, uh, unemployed people has uh, went up, uh, housing prices has dropped, uh, gasoline has went up, the number of people on food stamps has, has went up. Uh, when President Obama was uh, inaugurated, uh, our competitiveness in the world was number one. Uh, we, are now, we are now number five. So definitely we feel that the American people are not being told the truth, uh, that if we do not do something, we believe very strongly that if something does not happen, 
the United States and possibly the world uh, in the next coming years we will face a total economical collapse because no country, no business, no country, family, university can sustain a, uh, a debt of the amount that we have. And how do you feel about his eligibility to hold office and to run again? Yeah, the fact that President Obama was allowed uh, to become president without ever producing a, uh, a legal birth certificate is absolute a travesty. That, that is absolutely cannot be uh, explained. Uh, he produced some type of a birth certificate uh, of around three years later. I know myself from per personal experience that in order to produce a birth certificate, it takes a matter of hours or days. Uh, when I first went overseas, I needed a passport. To obtain a passport, I needed a birth certificate. I had in the meantime lost my birth certificate. But because I was born in Missouri, I called the capital of Missouri, which was Jefferson City, and within, and within a matter of a few days, they sent me a certified birth certificate. So the fact that he could not produce one before the campaign, long before the campaign, the fact that he could not produce one during the campaign, after the campaign, the fact that he was even allowed to run despite the fact that he was elected president of the United States without a legal birth certificate is absolutely ridiculous and shows the direction the country is going because people simply did not care. And they, simply, they simply did not care. And uh, that is one of the reasons that, that we are standing up and we are speaking out. So there are shibboleths about the way this country is going that people are afraid to criticize out of fear of being considered racist. Of course. And do you feel empowered to lead the charge to, to address these, these uh, uh, truths that dare not be spoken? Well, we're definitely trying to do that. Well, well, that is one of the main goals of Stand Up America now is to try to get people to stand up, get people to think. I mean, look, look at what is going on. Look at the condition of America. Look at the moral condition. Uh, look at the fact that we have 800,000 teenage pregnancies per year. Uh, look at the fact that we have uh, 3,700 abortions per day, over 100,000 worldwide. Look at the economic worldwide. Look at the medical, uh, condition. Uh, President Obama has created more debt than all presidents combined, from George Washington to George W. Bush. Uh, the fact that he even shows his face outside of the White House, the fact that he even runs for president again, takes an enormous amount of uh, courage, stu stupidity. Uh, so we're trying to get Americans to wake up and just look for the facts for themselves. They do not have to believe us. Google it. Get your computer. L look at what is going on. Look at the debt. Look at the, the, the country. Look at the fact that we are about to lose. The dollar is right now the world's reserve currency. That is the only thing that is keeping us above water. If we lose that, then we will no longer be able to just simply print money as we do now. And then that will be it. So we're trying to get Americans to wake up and hopefully it is not too late. The only problem that we have right now in America is we have a very, very dangerous, dangerous disease called apathy. People simply do not care. And it, it is part of your campaign to awaken Americans from their slumber? It is definitely, a going, we are definitely going to do it. We are definitely going to, going to give our best to wake Americans up. It doesn't matter if we have to yell, holler, and scream, if we have to have demonstrations. Uh, we, we, we are going to try to do whatever it takes just to simply get Americans to, Americans are they're, they're, they have become numb. I believe our society has numbed us. I believe the opium of society is the news media, uh, sports, and the entertainment world. Uh, the news media is not telling us the truth. The politicians are not telling us the truth. And news media and, and sports is keeping us in a state of... Uh, stupor? Stupor and a type of, um, I don't know, man-made uh, heroin. Uh, man-made, uh, yeah, I guess, I guess a little bit like metrics. Uh, we have swallowed the blue pill instead of the red pill. Uh, we sort of want to be deceived. So how do you feel that, um, that you are burning the Koran has, uh, helped advocate your position about fighting Sharia and uh, Islamism, political Islam? Well, there's no doubt the burning of the Quran brought, brought an awareness. I mean, if people would have really studied what we did, we didn't actually just burn the Quran. 
the Quran was put on trial. We had a five hour, six hour trial. We invited the Muslim community of which they came. There was imams there uh, to defend the Quran. We had a prosecuting attorney, a defense current attorney. It wasn't like we just grabbed up the Quran and a couple of matches and ran out into the forest and burnt the Quran. The Quran was actually put on trial. It was found guilty. Any, anyone who does a little bit of study in themselves, all they have to do is look around the world to see the travesty and the injustice of the Quran. Definitely it brought an awareness that made people think. Uh, hopefully it made people examine it themselves and see the injustice of the religion. What was it that you found that you found the found Islam guilty of that well, was well we found the Quran guilty of uh, several charges. They were mainly charges of course against humanity. We see that in Egypt. Uh, actually we see that in every Quran dominated country. I don't really understand in America why we have a problem with that. All we have to do is just look in every without exception every Quran dominated country there is injustice. Let's take for example Saudi Arabia. That is the home of the Quran. In Saudi Arabia women cannot vote or hold public office. They cannot even drive a car. They cannot get an education. Uh, they cannot travel without the permission of a male guardian. I mean all they have, all Americans have to do is just simply look around. But we are in denial because we want to be. Because if we had to face the truth, we would then have to do something. And you think it's that fear that the people are holding away from? It's de definitely the fear. Fear was a perfect example today. Uh, nothing has happened. Uh, we have not committed any kind of crimes. We did not do anything, but our activity at the university was stopped. The police met us. Uh, they warned us. They told us that if you come onto this campus, if you have a normal demonstration, speech, you will be arrested. This is the United States of America. It's not Nazi Germany. I mean, this, is, this, is not, this is not Russia. In the United States of America, you cannot go onto a campus and simply present a message, you will be arrested. Were they campus police or was it uh, Irvine City Police? Uh, this was, I believe, the campus police. They served us there. They had... Um, they came off the campus to, your, to where you were staying? No, we were brought to the campus. We were escorted into the campus and then they met by, with us by the, there. By the Irvine City Police? Uh, well, well, first by the Sheriff's Department uh, to the Irvine City to, uh, uh, Campus to police there, uh, about a half a dozen of them. Uh, they asked us if we had any type any weapons on us, which we did not have. Uh, and then they, they basically asked us and, and warned us uh, and told us that if we came back on the campus within the next seven days, we would immediately be arrested. I mean, that, that is a travesty. In other words, we would be arrested again, like in Dearborn. In Dearborn, we were arrested for having done nothing. In other words, if we go back onto the campus right now, we will be arrested for having done absolutely nothing. We have created no disturbance. We have not opened up our mouth. If we drive our car onto the, the limits of the campus, we will immediately be stopped and arrested in the United States of America. Now, they claim that there was a, a, a threat, was whether it's a threat to, the, to public order, or a, th a threat to you personally, then they claim that there is some kind of a... Yes, I, I think there are threats. We have, uh, we have three or four hundred uh, death threats. I have a reward on my life for two point four million dollars. Uh, yet there, there are definite threats out there. And I'm sure threats that were made. Uh, since we have been here in California, a couple of people have been arrested. Uh, the FBI is investigating that particular case. So I'm sure there probably were threats. But just because there are threats, that's not the reason to back down. You what kind of message are we then sending? We're sending the message of, why don't you threaten us, and then we'll back down. Do you feel like there was an abuse of power on oh, the part I think of, it part was of the authorities here? I think it was definitely an abuse. It was definitely an abuse of power. What they should have done is they should have met us, they should have welcomed us, and they said, you are here to exercise your First Amendment rights as long as you do that. Mm -hmm. As long as you are not promoting... Uh, uh, violence uh, as hate the speech is free speech not hate speech <laughs> uh, yeah that's that's how they like to label it in, in order to uh, shut you down I would like to I would like to ask the Irvine uh, uh, police and the campus police why did they not do anything to the imam who comes regularly onto the campus proclaiming death to America and death to Israel and, and the and the other the other Muslims who gather around there uh, spouting uh, terrorist phrases, why are those people not stopped? 
Why, why, why are we stopped before we even say anything? Well, why do they do this on a regular basis and absolutely nothing happens? Are those imams preaching a death to the kafir, to the, uh, to the Christian and Jewish infidels? Oh, definitely. Definitely. That is part of the radical message, of course, of Islam. Uh, de definitely their hate for the unbeliever uh, and their hate, of course, of course for Israel. That is, that is widely known.